free and copyright free on YouTube and I mean let's kick it right off with uh, talking about YouTube we're here on uh, morning banana number 53 the gravity defying bananas you know how bananas grow right they grow up so gravity should be pulling them down, but they grow up. So bananas are stronger than gravity, which doesn't surprise me. Let's check the live streams and then we'll get into talking about the YouTubes. You know, I feel like YouTube is trolling all of us. So yeah, I've been on YouTube since uh, before Google bought them. So, do you remember Vine? Vine was amazing. Six seconds worth of video and audio, and that's all that uh, the service. That's all that, uh, that you can get. Wow, we're dark in here. It's totally dark. Why is it so dark? It's not dark on my other camera. I've got two devices going here and one is just like so dark. Why are we so dark? Alright, let me grab this. Let's see what we can do. If I turn you this way, put you over here. Do you still seem so dark? See that's brighter to me. And we're right side up still, so it's like a win-win. That's what we're going to have to do. Sorry guys about that. Um, YouTube, yeah. So I'm building a wall here today. I'm back at the shop. Uh, thankfully, I don't, you know. I got to get this wall built. So, we're talking about YouTube. <clears throat> YouTube. So, if you remember Vine... Uh, Vine was like a six second video platform and then basically got bought by Twitter, uh, the conglomerate, and then um, shut down. And now Twitter is on this other, we're on some other BS at Twitter here. So, I mean, I've been on Twitter for like 10 years now and I am a fan, so don't, don't, May, don't let yourself think that I'm not a fan of Twitter. I don't log into the PC version of Twitter that much because, uh, as you may know, if you follow the hashtag AdamJoshWorks, I'm kind of busy. But if you scroll over on the tab on the left, there's a button that says Media Studio. And I saw this for the first time yesterday. And all my videos are here. Everything I've ever posted in, you know, quadra format, every four, four tile formats all the way down all the videos and I can go through and title them. They're all untitled. I can go through and edit them. And what does that remind you of? That reminds you of YouTube. So Twitter is now allowing you to upload videos, edit edit the titles. Look at this. Look at this. I can edit the title 
I can put the people that are in it. I can share a link. I can download it. This is next level. And uh, I have a follower on Twitter who was uh, speaking Portuguese to me yesterday, and she was kind of confused about this. Let's see who she was. You can follow her on Twitter. She is a flat earther. G.I. Flat Earth Brazil. So she was, speak, uh, she was speaking Portuguese to me, or maybe she was speaking Spanish, but uh, I translated it as uh, Portuguese, but G at G-Y-L-A-U-E-R. Jalalor. So. Um... G Y, yeah, there she is. I'm just going to uh, Google Translate here, and we want to output in Spanish. Maybe she speaks Spanish. I honestly thought that she spoke uh, Portuguese. Hey, you got a mention today in the morning banana show. Do you speak Portuguese or Spanish? care of that right here. So, yeah, I just sent her a message asking if she speaks Portuguese or Spanish. Let's have this banana. <clears throat> I was on YouTube uh, before Google bought them, and Google, back when I was growing up, was like Excite or Yahoo or Alta Vista. It was a search engine. And some of you are so confused about what search engines do that you you know, waste your money and time on search engine optimization. And uh, you get people that uh, give you ads about, uh, or come into your shop and try to pitch you, you know, we can uh, improve your search results for your company. So let me break it down for you. Originally, search engines were like detectives. So, you go to a detective and you say, I need to find everything out about diapers. And what does the detective do? He says, well, um, first he'll say, oh, give me some money, and then once you guys agree on the money, then that detective's job will be to go and find out everything about diapers for you and then give it to you in a listed format. That's what search engines were supposed to do. That's what they were for. Nowadays, nowadays, um, and coming up shortly, we're going to have AI be our search engine because there's so much internet data that no human could possibly coagulate it. Flashback. Internet search engines were like detectives. You go to Excite and type in bananas, you know, and they would give you all the information that they have on bananas. So, so where's the monetary exchange? Well, now you're finding out where the monetary exchange is. Aren't you? The monetary exchange was in tracking you in ads. So they're tracking everything you do, collecting that data, and selling it to so many different people. If you go on my account, on Google, like go and type in my account on Google and see what they're tracking. Made a phone call, sent a text message, looked at this image, looked up that, said, okay, Google, and then a bunch of other things after it, and it saves your audio. I mean, this is the level that we're at, and uh, you think China has a bad. China. That's where we're heading towards. So YouTube now has come down on a bunch of people and remove their monetization. Now, monetization is something and is a bigger topic. So, if, again, if you turn the clocks back years ago, YouTube, the YouTube team, the original YouTube team, when they were bought by Google, contacted me and said, 
you are a creator, a content creator. We'd like you to be a part of our platform, blah, blah, blah. They were trying to recruit me. Like they did to all those YouTube personality faces that you, you're familiar with. When you think of YouTube personalities, there's like 10 people that come to your mind, right? And if you're in, based in California, and if you know people that work at the office of YouTube, then this might be a little bit easier for you to understand. But uh, there were people that were kind of groomed to be the face of YouTube, you know? And uh, I don't live in California, but they didn't know that at the time. They were trying to basically recruit me, the YouTube team. And I said, no way. They were telling me how to monetize my account. This could be a career opportunity. It could make some money. Could you imagine if I actually had gone through with that? But anyway, I've never looked at... Some of you who know me know that, know that I've never looked at my art and my music and my videos as a way to generate income. These copyright-free artists think they're onto something new. I've had a website on uh, online since 2004, 2005. All my music is copyright-free. All my music is free to use. All my music is out there in the internet for free. So these guys, you think that you're on to something new, go to adamjosh.com and any song there that you want to listen to, you can listen to and I won't charge you. You can download any single song off my website. You can play, stream it from the top and I don't charge anybody and I've never charged anybody. So there is a music, there's a business everywhere. There's a business in death and I've, I've met a lot of guys who work at funeral homes. And there's a, there's a business in music, and I'm not in the music business, so I'm not looking at my music as a way to make money. And if you get go down that road, there are people in that music business, just like there's people in every other business, and some people are going to be more cutthroat and cruel than others. And if you're not willing to at least compete with these people, then you probably should not be in the music business, unless you're super talented or get somebody else to do it for you, right? Let's see, I got a comment here. Show me verifiable working flat earth map. I don't think this guy is on topic. We're talking about uh, YouTube right now and YouTube censorship. So, now YouTube's coming down on people like Steven Crowder demonetizing them. And what that means is these guys like Steven Crowder and the like they're not able to host ads on their videos anymore and get these pennies per clicks, which was the, the way that they would generate income. Now, if you look at any of my videos, including this one when it winds up on YouTube, none of my videos are monetized. None of my videos will have ads on them. And uh, that's the way it's always been. And keep in mind, I've been on YouTube since the beginning. So... The mistake that all these people made, if you turn the clocks back, the mistake that all these people made was looking at YouTube as a revenue stream when people who actually work at YouTube corporate also have friends and family who would be first in line. So we propped up, the content creators propped up this new uh, television system, this new way of... of digitally communicating. We propped it up with our content and with our people who would watch it and then give it enough time and they basically took it over. They gave you the carrot with the, uh, oh, you can make some money. You can make some money out of this. Bring your friends. Call all your friends. And I know this, I know this scenario because I've been in bands that have played. And it's the same, same routine. Hey, we'll pay you, you yeah. know. We'll bring your friends, we'll pay you. The bar owners, you know, the venue owners, bring your bring your friends. Advertise to your friends that you're gonna it's the same same routine. Everybody wants to make money. But YouTube was basically <coughs> back in the day, before Google bought them, they were like many other you uh, they were many like many other video sharing platforms and so what's happening lately is I mean you could say yeah there's a leftist agenda but how many people have been demonetized so for me they're calling it YouTube has been purging hate YouTube to ban hateful supremacist videos 
YouTube announced Wednesday it would ban videos promoting or glorifying racism and discrimination as well as those denying well-documented viol violent events like the Holocaust or Sandy Hook. So YouTube is going to be deciding what is real news and what is fake news. So I guess going down that road, if we start con questioning conspiracies like 9-11 uh, or the Gulf of Tonkin or Operation Northwoods, that may be, you know, a thought crime according to YouTube. So everybody, what, I, what I was getting at, and to put a kind of a pin in this, is what, what I'm getting at is the mainstream, everybody else around me, my friends and family, we're all starting to see, you're all starting to see the reason that I didn't get on YouTube. And so you can say that Adam can read the tea leaves or I saw it coming from a mile away, but I look at things differently and I called it from a mile away and I knew this since day one that this is what their plan was. So I never, I never partnered with them. I never became, I don't have a Google, I don't have a Google AdWords account. I have more YouTube channels than a lot of people who have been suspended, and I've made more videos and have more content online than a lot of people who have their platform demonetized. There's something that happens to you over time if you keep doing things for money, like making music, doing this type of, I'm talking to you, um, and we all know what it is. You could call it selling out. That's one thing. You could call it. Another thing is, you know, people who have money will try to steer your conversation by giving you money. And if all you're doing it for is money, then like a dog with a steak or this Pavlovian training, you start doing whatever it is that you're meant to be doing according to the Pavlovian dog trainers because all you care about now is your monetary reward and the bell dinging in your head when you get the money and all I'm saying is you're all seeing now why I've never been partnered with YouTube they they took down my live streaming privileges which is really ridiculous, and they're monitoring my video stream in real time for copywritten music. I mean, what an insult. When I've been giving away my music, I've been giving away my music for free for over 10 years online, but I'm being monitored on YouTube in real time if I dare to put something like Aretha Franklin, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, on, in the background, as I talk to you. Like, this is... Wow. But in, in, in the end, in the end, I mean, take a step back. YouTube, YouTube isn't my platform, it's not your platform, so really, we're using somebody else's platform, and this is what they've decided to do. So get off the platform if you don't like it. Twitter is going the way of YouTube right now. And they are trying, trying to, um, they're trying to become like, uh, Twitter is trying to become like YouTube. There you go. Check out the live stream on Twitter, YouTube disabled my live streaming privies a while ago. Yeah, so if you follow me on Twitter, my handle is at adamjosh.com have a conversation with me there. I was thinking about somehow getting this video to uh, getting this video to the guy who was just talking to me. Let's see here.
That might not work. That might work. Sorry, I'm looking at the HTML and reading through to find the code. Got it. So I've had my own website online for a long time. And, uh, oh wow, it worked. Almost like I can code. Some of y'all need to learn how to code. Anyway, so I've had my own website online for like years, years, over 10 years, 2004, 2005. I mean, I had to learn how to do all this stuff myself. I had to learn how to do video editing myself. I, I used to spend hours and hours and days video editing. If you go to my website or go on YouTube and type in Adam Josh, you'll see, like, I'll do four band, four person, I'll do the drums, I'll do the bass, I'll do the guitar and sing, and then produce the whole video myself and put it on YouTube. I taught myself how to do all that because I didn't want to be beholden to people holding it over my head that, oh, you want to record a video? You could be in the big time, come on. I'll record my own video if I want to record a video. I don't need you to record me, you know, and me pay you. And this, uh, well, if you want a video, you have to do this and do that. Like, just do it yourself. Do it the way you want to do it. And don't involve somebody else. But anyway, uh, what else can we talk about? Headlines. Uh, one thing I wanted to touch on. I had tweeted out a bunch of articles. Uh, let's find it. Last night I had tweeted out a bunch of articles and I was kind of rapid fire going through them. So one is this, uh, uh, this is hilarious, I was reading Business Insider and uh, one of Europe's flagship airlines is working on a fuel efficient V-shaped plane, KLM, the Dutch KLM Airlines. I don't know if you guys can see this but uh, this is the Business Insider, right? So. This plane, this V-shaped flying saucer plane, Dutch Airlines, the Flying V, they're saying, you see the two, the two jet engines right here, they're saying that, you know, they're going to hold the fuel for the jet engines uh, in the wings still, because that's where it's supposed to go, right? And it's going to be above the people's heads, I guess? It's so bizarre. I don't know if you guys are up on the jet fuel hoax or not, but it's definitely worth looking into. Propeller planes, old school propeller planes with like a jet with actual, without a jet, with an actual propeller, yeah, they take fuel. But we're totally being lied to about the amount of fuel, the type of fuel that these jet engines are taking. And the, ol the only reason is because they can, you, you're paying, you're paying for the ticket. And it, you would know, there would be no way you would pay for the ticket if you realized they weren't using uh, the right amount, of, the, the f amount of fuel that they're saying. It's ridiculous. The, the measurements and weights don't add up. If, you, if you're into science or into math, look up the math b behind how much uh, they're supposed to be in the, how much capacity they're supposed to be on these uh, planes, and then do the math. Look at the, the volume of fuel, look at the actual capacity of the plane, and look at the wings and the weight, and you tell me that it adds up. Alright? Math geniuses out there, you tell me. What else? I saw the trailer for Ad Astra last night with Brad Pitt, and all I can see now is Earth is a Ball and sci-fi nonsense. Like, the CGI is great, and I mean, imagine with $22 million a day what NASA can produce if they can make a movie like Ad Astra. The bottom line is, I'm not going to watch Ad Astra. Brad Pitt, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm not going to do it. Uh, alien News from Express.co.uk. Belief in E.T. will soon replace faith in God. Now, if anybody who's reading this has actually read the Bible, you would understand that the God of the Bible is actually an extraterrestrial because he's outside of Earth, he's off Earth, he created the Earth. I'm not a big fan of the God of the Bible. I think the God of the Bible is a mass murderer who's mass murdered more people than Hitler, Mao Zedong. But, even in the biblical definition, the God of the Bible is an extraterrestrial, so this whole article makes no sense, and also makes perfect sense at the same time. I also tweeted about, uh, what's her name, Fran Lebowitz. Trump derangement syndrome is real. She fantasizes about Trump's death. Now, a lesser person than me would report all this to the Secret Service. Border Agency. The DHS, 
Department of Homeland Security is buying 2.2 million diapers to help deliver many economic migrants and their children into America's work sites and neighborhoods. 22 million diapers. So instead of building a wall, I am building a wall, instead of building a wall, and instead of keeping your promises, you know, we're going to just uh, buy $2 million worth of diapers. 2.2 million diapers. I don't think they cost a dollar a piece, but isn't that crazy? Yeah, and then he says, well, we're going to, we're going to tariff Mexico. Yeah, how about you just break even? How about you just break even by tariffing them and tax, tax them a little bit? Okay, uh, here's another one. The case for wearing AirPods all the time. You're driving around in your car and you see people wearing headphones. What's the first thing you think? They can't hear you. So this is safer now to wear AirPods. The, the article is, oh, you can wear AirPods all the time. Amazon with their drone making blimps. Yeah, crazy times. And the headlines today over at Drudge. Pelosi wants Trump in prison. Well, the Trump derangement syndrome is real. Whether the guy is a total loser or the best president ever, uh, Trump derangement syndrome is a real thing. So... New surveillance tool coming to skies and surprise, it's a balloon. Yahoo Finance. A new surveillance tool is coming to US skies. Worldview Enterprises Incorporated builds what it calls Stratolites, a system designed to offer the type of coverage satellites afford but without the need to launch incredibly expensive rockets into space. Yeah. They're curtailing the SpaceX industries and the privatized space industries by saying, look, we're just gonna forego the elaborate CGI spectacle and put the satellites or the balloons on the satellites on balloons up without the for, without the having to waste the money on the rockets or the CGI which is what they've been doing all along rockets are real helium balloons are real you know these are real things don't be confused so i'm not uh Total nut job. Anyway, guys, I can rant forever. This has been the Morning Banana Show number 30... Number 53, wow. And... That's my song, I Was Thinking. You guys have yourself a great day. I gotta get to work and build a wall! Gonna build a wall! Follow me on Twitter, at AdamJosh.com. Deuces.